Hey guys, Anthony from Signal by Sony here. So you may be hearing phrases like smart TV, Sony internet TV, Apple TV, Google TV, but what's the difference between all of these? Well, it's an ambitious task, but I'm about to dive into everything you need to know to identify the differences between all these products so you can make an informed decision. Because it's not about buying a smart TV, it's about making a smart buy. So the easiest way to start is to ask yourself, what do I wanna do with my TV? Do you wanna sit back and watch more things beyond just your cable channels? Or are you somebody who's gonna lean into your TV and interact with it? You know, almost the same way you would with your smartphone by browsing the net and downloading apps. So let's say you're in the first category, that sit back category. Maybe you stream a lot of movies on Netflix. Maybe you watch a lot of YouTube videos or listen to music from Pandora. If that's you, then you'll wanna find a TV that connects to your home internet network and offers entertainment widgets, plus gives you direct access to different web content services. These kind of TVs give you a lot more option of what you can watch. It's like having a whole new cable network you can get to on your television, only it's internet based. Some stores or brands are calling these smart TVs, but you'll hear a lot of different names too. Until there's some consensus among the brands about naming, just search for TVs with internet connectivity. I've got two examples right here actually. I've got the Sony EX720 and the Samsung D6300. To find the smart TV that's right for you, here's three homework tips that I find helpful. So number one is what services do they offer? If you're gonna use Netflix on day one, then make sure the TV has it. And if you're someone who likes to find new things to watch, find a brand that offers lots of options. Sony's, for example, has loads. And if you're not ready to start using this feature, but just wanna have the option on your TV, then don't worry about the number of services a brand offers because the reality is that over the next few years, these TVs could very well end up having many of the same services. So number two is how is the navigation? Is it easy? Can I search through and browse my widgets okay? So on my left here, I've got the Sony interface which is nice, it's got the dock at the bottom and then a scrolling menu on the right, which I like because it kind of stays out of your way and keeps what you're watching currently in focus. Uh, the Samsung is a bit different. It's got all your widgets and options up on one screen for you. Uh, some people may like having everything up there at once. It's just a matter of personal preference. Uh, but you know, choose the navigation style that you find right for you. Number three is the biggest one, video processing. What's watching internet videos like? If you're getting a TV to access internet entertainment, then it is all about video processing. Well, Sony's been making TVs like this for a while, and they developed what they call the X-Reality Pro Engine. Basically, it analyzes lower resolution content and makes it look better on higher resolution screens. Now, if you have a TV that you already love or you're just not ready to invest in a new TV, you can buy a Blu-ray player or a set-top box with the same capabilities and turn your old set into something that's internet Enabled. Now you don't get the video processing features, but you can access the same content. We have a Sony 3D Blu-ray disc player right here. This one's got built-in Wi-Fi and lets you stream content for more than 30 internet services, including Netflix, YouTube, Pandora, and Hulu Plus. And this one runs about 180 bucks. So there's lots of options out there. All right, now we're here with a different set of products for the second category. And currently Sony is the only brand that offers both the smart TV products that we just talked about and products in this new category where you really interact with your TV. It's almost like you would do with your computer or your mobile phone. You open up a web browser and play with all the apps out there, stuff like that. So this is a very different scenario. And in this case, it's all about the Google TV platform. It leverages their popular Android OS and gives you access to a Chrome browser to cruise the internet, plus access all of those Android market apps you love. And as you can see, uh, when you look at these remotes, you can really tell the difference. These were very obviously built for some serious business right here, okay? And currently, there are only two brands that offer this, Sony's Internet TV line and the Logitech Review. And as you can see, we've got all of them here in the studio. Now, Sony offers both TV options that feature Google TV, as well as a Blu-ray player with Google TV built in. In the case of the Blu-ray player, for about $400, you can have all the features you'd want in a smart TV world, plus the Google TV features, along with the Blu-ray player itself, of course. So with these, it's similar to a computer. The key thing to look at is the processing power. Because you're surfing the net and playing with apps, you want ease and you want speed. So make sure you research the processing specs and pick the fastest one. Well, I hope all this information was helpful to you. And if you want to know more about any of Sony's new games, gadgets, and entertainment, be sure to watch our show at sony.com signal or youtube.com signal. For now, this is Anthony for Signal by Sony.